Good evening, dear colleagues. This is Umit Özaydın from Dragoman. I'm preparing this video only for my dearest interpreter colleagues, and it is about how to use Zoom as an interpreter. Well, as you have probably noticed, Zoom is a good choice for bilingual meetings because it has retour and it is bidirectional but only for bilingual meetings. I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, to begin interpreting in Zoom, all you need to do is to select your output channel and unmute your microphone. Well, let me show you how to do this. Uh, assume that this is you on a Zoom meeting and and the host assigns the interpreter. Okay, and that's, that's the hosts, for example. Okay, when the host assigns the interpreter, this is what you see on your screen. For the sake of this demo, I've chosen English to Russian, and you're supposed to say, okay, I am exact, ac accepting to interpret. When you accept, you will see a switch on your screen. By default, it goes to your output channel. In this case, it is Russian for me. Um, I don't speak Russian. I'm just using this for for the for the for the sake of the demo. Um, and uh, during the meeting, if somebody speaks in Russian, I can switch to English and continue interpreting. And then, for example, there is a Q and A. I can go back and forth, back and forth. This is for. Uh, bilingual meetings, not for multilingual. As an interpreter, uh, more or less, this is what you will see on your screen. You may have your video enabled. It depends on you and also on the organizer. The organizers may, by default, disable video to all participants, including the interpreters. Okay, I'm moving back to my presentation. So you have unmuted your microphone and you are ready to interpret. How do you hand over to your booth mate? Well, you can use Zoom's chat box if it is enabled, or you can use a WhatsApp chat or any other chat program to signal, hey, I'm tired, you want to take over? You can use screen symbols on Zoom. There is this coffee break symbol. You know, there are, there are other symbols as well you can use. Hardly visible, but um, some people use it. Uh, then the only thing you need to do is mute yourself and your mute mate unmutes herself or himself. Well, some colleagues argue that we need a handover or switch button uh, and some interpreting platforms have, uh, have it. Well, I personally find them a little uh, more uh, distracting. Because when I'm trying to hand over, I'm supposed to switch. Uh, I'm pressed with a switcher, and typically there are, there is 45 seconds to 60 seconds until my colleague responds to me, and then is she going to take it over? When she is going to take it over? We don't see each other. We are not in the same booth. It adds to my anxiety. I'm I'm, I'm giving you my personal perspective. I really prefer to use chat and say, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really tired. Do you want to take, take it over? But I mean, uh, everybody has their own choice. Um, let's talk about multilingual meetings on Zoom. Can you do retour? No. Can you ha do relay? No. It is monodirectional, meaning the floor language is, say, Turkish. So I can take it to English, another colleague takes it to German, and then somebody takes it to Russian, but it all goes from the one same source language. There is no relay, there is no retour, meaning if, you, if your client needs a trilingual setup, uh, it is possible, but in this case, uh, the panelists or the attendees will not be able to ask questions in their own language or how we manage this well there is a Q&A uh, channel in Zoom or there, there are chat boxes 
So people ask their questions and there is a moderator. The moderator filters those questions and comments and asks them in English to the panelists. Well, Zoom fits certain use cases, but not all use cases as it is now. Uh, how can you listen to your booth mate when using Zoom? Well, download Zoom app, register and join with an alternate email address as an attendee to the same meeting. Choose the output channel and listen to your booth mate. Can you listen to your booth mate in Zoom? In the current version, no. In the previous version, they were given a bleed. Like the second channel was audible, you know, in the background. It wasn't ideal. You could not adjust the volume. Um, you may argue that this is not ideal. Well, I, but I must say uh, several well-advertised platforms, and I'm not going to name any brand, but several well-advertised platforms in the market, they are uh, suggesting the same thing. Download the app and listen to your booth mate. Um, question, my language is not listed on Zoom, what I'm supposed to do. Well, for this current version, Zoom only has nine language names on its screen. Uh, I mean, I'm Turkish. It doesn't have Turkish. What we do is we use in, usually the oddest language in Turkey is Chinese. So we use English and Chinese and Chinese becomes Turkish. So if I want to uh, interpret into Turkish, I use Chinese. That's but I mean, I could use any any channel, but that's what that's the way I do. So I mean, on Zoom, uh, learn your channel. It's not channel one or A, B, C. It is names like Chinese, Portuguese, Spanish, German. So know, know which channel are you on, okay? Um, Zoom gives visibility to interpreters. So that is correct um, because uh, in, in Zoom, you have your box like any other participant uh, or panelist. So some agencies prefer to use their branding. Like for example, we are Dragoman. We can ask our interpreters, well, use Dragoman Turkish, Dragoman German. That's one way to do it. Or with your name and agency brand, like Dragoman Umit, or just your name and language, like Umit Turkish, or your name only, Umit Ozaydin. These are the options you may choose. Nobody forces you to do this, but this more or less, I, I see these are the visibility options. And in many meetings, I think it, it, it is becoming customary for the interpreters to start the meeting with their video and greet the audience. It gives a nice personal touch that people see you with their face and it adds also adds to the trust because there is no booth, there is no physical room so seeing the interpreter uh, in front of the camera, at least in the beginning of the session, is a good idea. And many uh, organizers do it. And some organizers, they want to thank you, which is very nice to have at the end of the meeting. In that case, turn your video on and you know, give a hands up, thumbs up. It's very polite to do. Uh, well, these are my typical remarks, but I have some additional suggestions. First and foremost, you need to download latest version of Zoom because uh, your browser may not necessarily have the latest uh, script. Uh, so make sure to have a Zoom downloaded to your computer. Make sure your browser is updated and also enable camera and microphone access. If you don't do this, what happens? Well, nobody will hear you. That is the case. Uh, some of some some colleagues complain that oh, I had so many problems. Well, um, I know remote work is not easy. We weren't used to this, and you weren't expecting all of a sudden things become so dramatically digital. But I think it is time to invest some time and learn. Enable how to enable your camera and microphone access on your browse, browser to Zoom. Um, remote work is very and very exhausting. Uh, 
And I think uh, the remote simultaneous interpreting uh, gives us a unique opportunity to educate clients on the interpreter fatigue. Because, I mean, for years, people were saying, oh, why, uh, why do you need two people or, you know, three in certain cases? I'm in the same room. I'm joining the same session, but I am only one person. And then you are asking for two. But Zoom and other video conferences, now a lot of people are complaining that they are very, very tired. Well, it's on the normal. We interpreters, we knew it because having a headphone, you know, focusing on a screen or be it, you know, a stage or, or a computer screen for a prolonged time is really exhausting. And also some sudden exposure to loud, a loud sound is also very exhausting. You know, some people, they don't adjust their headsets properly or they want to, uh, you know, just broadcast a live video to the, to the, uh, to the, to the webinar. And in those moments, those sudden expo exposure to loud sound are very, very exhausting and risky. Uh, in the 1990s, the Australians, they have come up with a definition called acoustic shock. Later on, it was built into ISO standards. Uh, please Google acoustic shock and make sure that you protect your ears and also other people in the webinar protect their ears. Uh, against acoustic shock. Well, what, uh, recommended headphones are, uh, noise canceling for the ears, but also noise canceling for the microphone. Um, uh, also a lot of, uh, not a lot of, but several, uh, headsets, they have, uh, these brand names like Active Guard or Sound Guard or Limit Ear, uh, Make sure that you have, make sure to purchase one of these ones because they will provide uh, protection against very high decibels of audio. A lot of uh, colleagues and brands recommend USB connection. I am using a USB connected uh, headset. Some colleagues uh, have a different opinion. You may see on Twitter and LinkedIn and I respect everyone. At the moment, I am happy with this setup. Otherwise, you may choose an analog uh, microphone and use an adapt ear device. Uh, SoundGuard, it's also a brand, also has uh, similar devices. Uh, what they do is you can monitor two channels. It mixes, it's like, it acts like a mixer and you can uh, literally listen to two channels like the speaker and also your booth mate and uh, adjust the volume levels so that to, to your to your comfort uh, also adapt ear and sound uh, guard they protect your ears against uh, acoustic shocks my four pillars as usual uh, make sure to have broadband internet a good computer a functional camera headset a microphone and a backup plan your backup plan may include a second internet connection, a second computer, which is kind of expensive. Uh, but I think a second headset is not a bad idea. Anything can happen. And backup plan may also include a standby interpreter. That is what at Dragomon we recommend to our clients. They pay 20, 30% premium to have an interpreter standby uh, not working, but on call. Um, you know, this is internet. Anything can happen. You know, that, that might be a power outage or some, or something else. So a backup plan helps. Um, that's all folks. Uh, if you have any questions, this is our corporate website. That is my LinkedIn profile and my email is umit at dragomon.ist. Stay safe. Stay home, learn digital work, and I hope you will get more and more jobs soon. All the best. Bye-bye.